This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Hey, check out part one for help with making the decision to upgrade your old laptop and what to upgrade if you decide to do it. Now, let's expand our memory and storage capacity. We're talking sticks of RAM and solid state hard drives. This is probably the most easy and rewarding upgrade you're gonna be able to do to any notebook. Now, before we begin, folks, electronics can shock people and they randomly explode. So prior to working on the guts of your laptop, always, always unplug it from the wall, turn it all the way off, and then remove the battery. That's important. And like I was saying, there is no easier upgrade than adding memory to a notebook. And the joy of notebooks, and one of the easiest things about them is the fact that they usually put these ports in easy to find places. Dedicated access ports for getting at things like memory, hard drives, other parts like that. Uh, generally speaking, easy to install and remove these parts, and if you're buying memory, you even get to use smaller size parts than you might be used to on the PC side of things. And SOD, essentially when we're talking memory called. as well, similar to, similar to your computer, you want a matched pair for a notebook if you're gonna go with two sticks. So if you pop open your notebook and find that in the access port on the bottom side where your memory is located, and we've got that in there. Now if you find you only have one stick, that would be one way to upgrade. You could just see what type it is, order that same one, and grab another one. There are the two memory modules right there. A lot of memory manufacturers actually have a guide that'll help you. You look up the name, the model number, it'll tell you yeah. it, it can take one stick, it can take two sticks, how, many, how much memory it'll max out at. Totally. That can be super helpful. Now, for older notebooks, I find that they're pretty conservative about how much memory will fit in the notebook. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll usually limit it to about a gigabyte. Now, I have, I have never seen a notebook that won't take at least two. Right. So just to let you know, on most notebooks, you'll be able to at least go with the one gigabyte stick times two on that. So now, uh, getting that memory in and out, really easy. There's actually, for notebook memory, there's two little tabs on each side to pop that out. Mm -hmm. And the joy with it is, you just barely slide these little tabs on each side, and you should have a little response to it pop up. And then once it does, you remove these as such, straight out, replace it with the module, same orientation, watch for the notch. That goes right back in as such. <laughs> Do the not trick drop being, your memory inside the computer. Trick being, you just kind of leave it there and then you give it a gentle press down. Once it's in the slot, you just press it down and it locks itself into place. Now, of course, there's two there, two modules, and you have to do the bottom one first, but it stays in there. I don't think it's in there, dude. It is. I was going to say, though, to get the one out from underneath <laughs> of it, though, you have to remove that bottom one first. So there is that. Now, for the SSD, could you take a look at it there? Taking out my memory module. Yeah, yeah. See? It wasn't inserted all the way. <laughs> Even better to have somebody double check your work for you. Now, for the hard drive, uh, another easy upgrade. A dedicated port on most notebooks. Now, I have an old notebook that doesn't have a dedicated hard drive port on it, on the bottom of it, and it requires you to actually remove about 15, 20 screws. Yeah. That's a far well, more difficult upgrade. When you say port, you mean like a lid you can unscrew or on a lot of the older MacBooks. It's funny, I just upgraded actually, uh, Liz, one of the folks who works in our studio, had me swap a hard drive in and it was 27 screws to open up this MacBook Pro to get inside of it. Cause you had to pull the entire bottom off and the top off. Have some good tools if you're gonna go down that route. And I cannot stress enough to where you want a nice clean workspace. So mm -hmm. if the screw goes flying, you can hopefully find it and, and tape. Uh, things like painter's tape. Right. Put a strip of that down on the table and stick all the parts to it. <laughs> you have less of a chance of losing stuff, basically. Also, uh, we were talking about the ports on the bottom of the notebook. Uh, you can check, and they're all labeled as such. And I generally would recommend you just explore a little bit. Take them off and see what's under each one. You might have ports you don't need. Like on this particular notebook, there's actually a space for an extra hard drive. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're not going to bother with that one, but... Uh, there's no harm in damage, really. Just make sure you don't lose your screws and get everything put back the way it was. Now, for this particular notebook, there's actually a port right here on the front that where the hard drive inserts and lives, you could say. And for this particular notebook, they have it in a caddy. Now, this little drive caddy is whatever notebook or whatever hard drive you're going to replace it with, you basically will then remove the old, remove the caddy that's on the old hard drive as such. Let me get that off there. Slide that out. Caddy being just the holder for the new drive. Mm -hmm. And in this case, our SSD will slip right in the way it was. Uh, there's some screw holes on the side. We just add that to put our fasteners back in. Drive is in the same orientation. Uh, in this case, this is the outside of the drive. The connectors are on the inside of where the connector, or where the, uh, where the, uh, how it slides in, and as such. 
to reinsert it, these literally just slide right back in. So the nice thing about the SATA connectors is they're it, super easy to, to engage in there. Totally. And for that one, it has a little tab that tucks under and the cover just goes right back on. That's that is the hard drive removed. That's all the data being mm -hmm. removed. So before you do that step, you really have, this is your last chance. Here's the old hard drive. Uh, here's the checklist. Did you go through the BIOS and make sure it's upgraded on the old computer? Right. Do you have your data backed up off this drive? Uh, for the new operating system, if you're gonna you know, go with Windows 7, Windows 8, Linux, whatever, basically have those files ready to go and create a USB installer for your favorite operating system. I don't care if you're using Linux or what. This one happens to be uh, Linux Mint. Uh, I also have one for Win 7. I have one for Win 8. That USB installer is so much faster than using the old, uh, basically, optical media. It's just much quicker. And also, test that boot media, your new installer, on the notebook prior to basically swapping out the hard drive so you can make sure everything's working right, that you can get to that boot menu, that if you need to, you might need to go into the notebook's BIOS and set that USB device as the primary hard drive so right. you can boot from it things like that, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. Now, with the drive installed, the cover replaced, basically, you're gonna end up with an old notebook hard drive, and what to do with that. And one thing I can suggest, if you know anybody with a PlayStation 3, <laughs> go ask them what, what, what size their old hard drive is, and these are great for doing an upgrade on an old game console. Otherwise, get yourself an external enclosure, put this sucker in an external enclosure, and you just gave yourself a nice external drive that can be powered off a USB port. Pretty cool. There's lots of stuff you can do with old hard drives. Next time, we'll walk through the OS install. And if you have it on a USB key, it is a brisk 10-minute walk <laughs> with a bunch of updates after that. Hey, if you have a question about upgrading your notebook, your laptop, you're looking for some more detail, give us an email, techzilla at revision3.com or post at facebook.com slash techzilla. Right now, we're going to thank one of our sponsors. He's a modding wizard, and you should join Ben Heck and his friends as they build and modify a host of amazing, community-inspired creations. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben shows off an AMD computer mod. Check out element14.com slash tbhs for a chance to win the latest builds from Ben's show. How cool! And be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show each week right here at revision3.com slash tbhs.